Welcome to the Fall Play YouTube channel. Well, hi, everybody. Uh, today's Thursday. That must mean it's time for Thirsty for Theory Thursdays. And we have an excellent panel of uh, guests today. Uh, we have Bibi. We have Julie. We have Christy. We have Millbilly. Obi-Wan. And Zoe. I'd like to thank all the panelists for joining us today. I hope you listened uh, last week to our tribute to Teresa. Uh, and this week, we just wanted to go over some of people's favorite top-level theories. Uh, not getting into any particular one in any uh, you know, deep level of detail. Uh, we have about, about five theories uh, that we want to go through you guys with uh, that different people uh, advocate uh, personally or will, will be advocating at least uh, today. Uh, those theories uh, range pretty widely with regard to uh, how Teresa Halbach may have went missing, uh, to uh, you know uh, who who may have uh, actually uh, killed her, um, and we'll also discuss at the end, the very end, uh, we'll put Stephen Avery's name out there as well too, and discuss uh, some of the uh, aspects of the you know the theory that he may have done it that the the guilters love so much. Uh, and talk about what is most attractive about that theory, and what is, you know, uh, what what are the points that in our uh, in our minds, the truth of mind, uh, make it most unlikely. Um, so the first theory we're going to start out with is one from Bumblebee, BB. Can you take it away, BB? Oh uh, yeah, my theory is that she's still alive. That's, and my. You know, that's a great theory. I think there there are a lot of people uh, that that are that are into that theory. Um, and uh, why do you think? Um, what what is it that most attracts you about that theory? The one number one thing would have to be the convenience and the timing of the whole thing. It was just in time to stop the depositions, um, and it just every bit of it times out just too convenient for them being law enforcement. Yeah, I, I think I think that's right. Uh, there it is. There is. Um, it, it just to, for 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 me, uh, it's just really hard to believe that this girl goes missing at just that time, and um, you know, it, it, j just after leaving the Avery salvage yard, right? What what are what are the chances that a girl would go missing just at the right time after just leaving the Avery salvage yard? And then that that's actually uh, something that they something that the guilters uh, like to latch onto. How how could it have not been Stephen Avery? It's just not believe. It's just not believable um, that she's leaving the Avery salvage yard and he's he's the last one to see her alive. And it's 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 not it's not him. So uh, it's just so that the timing is just so convenient for law enforcement um, that 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 happened. Is, 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 uh, now is are there other things you think that um, uh, yeah that point um, in that direction? The number two thing would have to be um, Kathy Williford. Is that her name? The DOJ. Kathy agent. Williford. Who? Who's Kathy Williford? She's a DOJ agent that held the job before Teresa, as if oh, they were so trying to set him up with something. Right. So that just so just the, the the job that you're talking about is the auto trader photographer, right? Yes, and the one who has the Avery Salvage Yard as the route. Right, right. Isn't that amazing that uh, a D that a DCI agent would be a photographer for Auto Trader? That that would be you know when you think about it, that's actually a great uh, you know kind of a great shill job for an FBI, right? If you if you could get it, it's not yeah, really good clear. Good undercover. That, yeah, good undercover. Uh, not not clear that Auto Trader knew about it. We're not trying to uh, make any aspersions here about uh, um, you know whether Auto Trader is some type of shill company for the FBI. We certainly don't know that. Um, but boy, uh, what a great undercover job. Uh, they're going to get you access to places in a very inconspicuous manner uh, than, 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 any, than just about any other job. Um, so, so yeah, so, so Kathy Williford works for the, for, for the, for the FBI. Um, does it, so that, that can kind of mean that if the FBI has the ability to slide people in there, um, then they could they could have slid some false Teresa Hall back in there or Teresa herself. And, uh, you know, she, she could have, you know, what you think that she maybe took, uh, you know, the, some some payola to, to leave town or what, what, what do you kind of think about that? Yeah, I probably. I figured there was probably a payoff. And and I just think that maybe Kathy didn't get the results that they wanted. So they. 
put in a newer, younger, better looking model to hopefully get him to, I don't know, try and rape her or something because they're always trying to make him very rapey. So, <laughs> you know. And how, how do you think the hallback, if there was some payola uh, involved there, wouldn't you think that the hallbacks would be the recipients of this payola? How, how do the hallbacks do after this? Uh, what about well, what about Mike Hall? Other people have lots of theories on that, like that Mike got the job at Green Bay. And what, what, um, job, is what, job, what job is that? What job is that? Let's be real he's, specific. He's a videographer for the Green Bay Packers. And he got it right out of school, and it would be very rare for him to move up through the ranks so quick. And yeah, it's a pretty high job. level job, isn't it? Yeah, pretty high level yeah. job he's got there, yes. isn't it? Uh, with the Green Bay Packers, yeah. it's kind of a kind of a dream job. And boy, how, how did he ever get that? Now, now that would be like lightning striking twice if another Hallbach were to get like this miracle job too, wouldn't it? Well, so who's, well, what about Tim, Tim Hallbach? What, what, oh, what, Tim what do you know? Yeah. <laughs> How's that even possible? Yeah. So what, what about Tim? What job did he get? He got a partnership in a law firm with the number one dairy lawyer for the area. A right partnership. Wow, he must be a very experienced lawyer to become a partner. Right out of school. Right out of school. Oh, my God. How's, oh, well, that's, that's another shocking detail that uh, probably a lot of people don't know. Uh, well, there, there you have it. Um, uh, There's uh, some the, people that point to some milk grant that supposedly uh Karen and whichever brother she's married to um yeah. <laughs> well uh, er, uh Richard Urban was Teresa's father so it was the other one Tim then Wait, Tim, no yeah. Tom. Tom 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 that's right Tom, Tom. Tom. yep yeah um so yeah the, so there, there's some there, there's some things that point in the direction of that theory uh now uh I know that, and, and probably we should avoid saying names, but there are some people who who actually have a person that they think is her, uh, right, who lives in Canada. I, I, where, where do you stand on that? Uh, I think it's a good possibility. So, so I, I, I wonder if we lot can... Of, I find a lot of similarities that are just really bizarre. I'm yeah. not sure how it plays <laughs> out, but... Yeah. Yep. Yep. So what, what do you think are the biggest uh, detractors to that theory? Um, some people say the age, but it would be perfect if you were to switch identities to change your mm -hmm. age. Um, some people the say age the is height. Yeah. Yeah. Some people say the height, but when you compare pictures, of people standing next to people they could possibly be the same height i don't know yeah um, well, so what about what about the the i think you know from in my, in my mind one of the you know it, it's a it's a high risk uh, move right i mean somebody 25 years old might be resolute about the fact that they never want to see anybody in their family again but maybe by the time you turn 40 you know maybe you want to spend thanksgiving with your mother uh, well you know why can't um, your mom so, come to you yeah, you, you, you don't, don't you think that people are watching? I mean, don't you think that? Yeah, I think probably Christy is probably stopping Karen Hallback, don't you? I, I oh, think that on, when this that whole bad. thing, <laughs> I think when this whole thing went down, that um, nobody thought anybody was going to ever look at any of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think you're probably right about that. I think you're probably if right about that. Steve was considered a nobody, um, dispensable. Um, yeah. Yeah, we need to get rid of him, and nobody's giving any care. Right? Nobody's going to care, right? But 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 it turns out that a lot of people realize that what you can do to the least of us, you can do to any one of us, and yeah. uh, that that's what that particularly scares me quite a bit. So I, I you know I, I think one of the theories that I've that I've always mentally strung along uh, ties very well um, with uh, uh, that with that theory, and that and that theory is that uh, Teresa actually did die which is quite different from that she's alive but she did not die uh having anything to do uh with uh, with the avery salvage yard perhaps she overdosed perhaps she got in a car accident 
you know, I don't even know how, you know, how far away that might have been from the time she last visited the Avery Salvage Yard. To, to me, you know, I, I don't necessarily think that um, Stephen Avery might have been paying enough attention to even notice that it was some different girl that looked a bit like Teresa who cut her hair the same way, um, you know, and, and kind of dressed similarly uh, to, to, to show up. That might have been a different girl that showed up maybe, the, you know, the last two, three, four times uh, and then showed up the first, uh, you know, two, you know, five, six, seven times. Um, I, I don't think they would have noticed, um, you know, so uh, it could be that, uh, you know, she she had she she died in a particular way um, and uh, the um, the state uh, got access to uh, her body, perhaps through one of these clubs. Uh, you know, the, the Hallbacks ha would have had to have play along. You know, the, the, the state would have you know made no bones about it. I, I, I mean, I personally don't believe that that law enforcement would, would would kill her. But it's the perfect crime, right? Because, uh, you know, you, you, you get you get her remains, you partially cremate her or mo mostly cremate her remains, uh, except for this one little bone with this one little speck of flesh on it. Uh, and you kind of pay off the family uh, and turn their daughter's death into something that's uh, positive for the, uh, you know, for the for the family, uh, extremely positive for uh, Manitowoc law enforcement to allow the framing of Stephen Avery, and the rest of the theory sort of plays right along in the same uh, in in the in the same way. Uh, there's no there's there's really kind of no real death here to investigate because no because uh, no nobody actually killed her. Um, and uh, you know it's it's sort of the same. It's it sort of follows along exactly. You know they still need to plant the car because she was uh, uh, because somebody somebody was there. Uh, they need to uh, substitute her for that. Uh, you know those last time or last few times. Uh, and uh, you know the only difference is you don't have to worry about her coming home for uh, for, for Thanksgiving. Um, you know, I th so I, th I think that uh, is a theory that's very much along the uh, the, the, the same lines. Um, well, and you, know, you you mentioned the piece of tissue. Um, I I find it horribly ironic um, that the bones are burnt to uh, a point of like professional cremation. There's absolutely no way they can get DNA off them. But there just happens to be this little teeny piece of tissue muscle whatever it was that's still left attached to this little piece of leg bone we're not talking like a whole leg bone it's a piece of a leg bone that they're able to miraculously get the mitochondrial dna from right just per just perfect right just just as they just as they what do. are the odds yeah, what are the odds exactly and, and so another thing that strikes me uh about um, about this theory, and, and and at some point they become the same theory, right? Uh, because she's she's being disappeared. Uh, if you look at her cell phone records, um, it's Halloween. Uh, she she's been to a party supposedly the night before in Green Bay. Uh, she's going to a party that night. How many personal calls did she get on Halloween? Not that many. She doesn't seem to be getting a lot of calls. So who who call, who called her on? Uh, November 1st to say, oh, where were you last night? How are you doing? Uh, how many calls does she actually get on November 1st? Not a lot, right? So uh, uh, it, even, if, even if any, I don't recall the exact number. Uh, and we don't so, know what was on her voice messages because they were we, conveniently erased. <laughs> very, very conveniently erased. Uh, and perhaps the only ones that sent her voice messages uh, were, were the ones that were in on the uh, conspiracy. Uh, and, and there's the whole lack of text messages. Uh, you know, at some point I'm going to put out a video on exactly why uh, a crap load of her text messages should have been available uh, and why any reasonable uh, FBI, FBI investigator should have known where to go or where to look to get at least every single text message that was sent to her uh, after her phone was destroyed. And, and they were just too either too incompetent or didn't want to show the fact that she was actually not getting them because people knew that she wasn't alive uh, anymore, certainly some core people. Why, you know, why wouldn't her mother have, have st completely stopped sending her text or, 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 or other people? Um, so, yeah, so uh, th there are a lot of detractors to my theory as well, of course, if you can. You uh, also say... have that creepy comment that uh, Pierce made. Yes. About the her telling comment. him that she yep. wasn't going to work there anymore after Halloween. That this was her last day. Yeah, this was her very last day. I don't want to trade it. No, no one can verify, I think, <laughs> uh, right, that he, that he said that either, right? Um, no, yet, that's on uh, his word. 
Yeah, in his word, yep. Um, so uh, yeah, so uh, my, I, th I would say the main detractor for this is for my for this part of the theory is is that it, it's hard to hide that somebody died, right? It, it, you know, somebody yeah, somebody dies, you're, um, you know, you're um, you, you, you usually get to the paper, usually people know. Um, but it could, you know, you, you could, if it happened suddenly, uh, and you were kind of aware, uh, that there was this need, um, from some special people, uh, like what special people, uh, like, uh, you know, um, who, who was Ryan Hillegas's father? Anybody uh, want to chime in as to, as to who, who he was and who he was good friends with? Pagel, right? Pat Ryan, Ryan, uh, Hillegas's yeah. father knew Pagel. Yeah, he turned um, state's I, evidence in a case for her like a year or a year and a half prior to this. Yeah, so so uh, yeah, so that's that's how um, he, Ryan himself might have been aware of of, of something like that. Um, uh, but but you know it is it is hard to hide uh, something like that. But the state was at a time where they really needed to take a risk, and the elaborateness of the, the of the setup against Avery kind of speaks to the level of uh, risk that they were willing to take, doesn't it? So anyway, let's move on from that. We spent a lot of time on that one slash two theories. Why don't we move on to Julie? I'm here. How are you doing today, Julie? How are you today? I'm doing fine. Hey, this is your first time. port. Thanks for joining <laughs> us. We're really glad to have you. Thanks. You're here from Mam Gossip, right? That's where you uh, found us. Um, well, both uh, Mam Gossip and SAP. Nice, nice, nice. So, so what are you going to talk to us about us today? What's your favorite theory? Well, my favorite th theory lately. Um, it's recent. It's been recently posted on Reddit, um, on the TikTok Manitowoc thread. Uh, by a gentleman with the name of Local Truther. And he had posted a year ago also that played the same line. And for some reason, it's not letting go. And his theory is quite interesting. Um, it involves a woman being the culprit of taking Teresa's life. And wow. it, there's not too many theories that have a, a woman killing Teresa, are there? Oh, I know there aren't. And that's why <laughs> a lot of people, you know, they're, hey, a woman scorned um, <laughs> can do some damage. And it's always a possibility, you know, you just, it's, it, I just found it very intriguing. So what's the crux of the theory? The crux of the theory. Okay. There's a gentleman local local truther who states that he's a member of the Manitowoc County Deputies and Constables Association and then there's a little subgroup from there that they he calls the posse and on uh, November 7th down by Cuss Road he was called in to um take over a shift and by guarding that area on Cuss Road and he, his theory is that there was a couple that lived right across the street from where all the action took place. Because Cuss Road, something big happened on Cuss Road. Or you can say that again. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so he uh, got called uh, on to be, uh, to, to be a guard during the shift. Uh, this would probably have been on the, uh, the 6th or the 7th. Or the, uh, uh, on the seventh. or the eighth, the all seventh. out there Excellent. on the seventh. Yeah, yep. and nothing happened. He just would. I, he probably stood. He wasn't in the crux of everything. He was, you know, block helping block the road and st any roadways going in and things like that. That's what I'm assuming. But anyway, he said that he recalled this couple, young couple in their twenties, that lived on Cuss Road, almost across the street from where. They had everything all taped off and everything, and there was tarp on the ground and or a blue blanket or something is what he had said. And uh, but after that, he got divorced, and she was either divorced or or uh, estranged. 
and they dated a couple of times and she had a serious drinking problem and he just wasn't he couldn't deal with that so their dating history was very brief but his theory was when they were married when when this woman and her husband were married and living on Cuss Road they were about the same age as Teresa and you know with her drinking and everything um they may have been living the same kind of lifestyle as Teresa and may have participated in having intimate portraits taken mm -hmm. and you know and wow. possibly and then possibly the husband had a little secret affair with Teresa. And... She wasn't afraid to do that, was she? Pardon me? She wasn't afraid to do that, was she? Teresa? I, right. You know, I don't know if she's that promiscuous as far as just doing anybody's husband, but... She did that with she Bradley did it with Chuck. One. Right. She did it with, with Brad, you know, and maybe, maybe, you know, I don't know. It's a possibility. We don't know Teresa's intimate lifestyle. We don't really know. It's been hush hush. You know, it's probably part of the gentleman's agreement. <clears throat> it's, it's, I mean, we don't for for not for not knowing her uh, lifestyle. We know she had an affair with Bradley Check. We know that she uh, had intimate relationship with Brian Hilligus, and we know that she had intimate relationship with Scott Blador. And if we had more information about her, I think we we <laughs> you know it's uh, that, that that's a lot of information to have. Yeah, it is, and <clears throat> it it could play into what happened, you know, in this situation, and this theory that local truther has that's interesting so um and, so, so local truth i lives right across uh the, the woman she lives right pretty much right across the street from from leo r right who called up uh and said that Teresa knocked on her door one night looking for her directions yes <laughs> also on I, don't, I don't know if if i could expose the address or not on here but anyway um Last house on the right, though, right? As we see in the aerial views, that that's closer to that blue tarp where that, that blue tarp was discovered. And that uh, can I add something? Yeah, that please. that uh that same house that you're referring to, in the jail calls we hear between Stephen and his mom, he clearly states that that guy in that house may did it because he's been trying to get the junkyard shut down. Wow, very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> can we say can we say his initials on here? Yeah, go ahead. We say initials everywhere. JKS. Okay. On Cuss Road. Okay. Was that Mill Billy who who said that? Yes, it was. Okay. Mill Billy Mill Billy has encyclopedic knowledge uh, of the case, uh, and oh, uh, it's wonderful. always amazing what details he can pop up with. Um, it, it, he just knows everything, and it's and it's scary how much he knows. <laughs> well, okay. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, try to do this as quickly as I can. This was kind of a new post, but the guy did post a little bit about it a year ago too. Local Truther did. But anyway, um, his theory is that she found out they were having an affair and got her to come over Halloween night, you know, and. Met her with a tire iron, started beating the heck out of her rav, knocking out the window and smashing in the uh, windshield. And, you know, in my opinion, if I were Teresa and I was sitting in my rav and there were someone, a crazy woman drunk on her butt was doing that, I would get out and try to make <laughs> her stop. And probably that tire iron hit her right in the head and knocked her out. And the husband was there and couldn't, things got out of control. You know, he, there, he was just, it happened so fast. He has a relative with the same last name that's a DCI agent oh. for Calumet sure. County. Very interesting. Very interesting. Those initials so are MCS. And uh, it was, and so he thinks that maybe he gave him a call. You know, we're in trouble, and that then they 
put Teresa's body across the road, covered her up, because they realized that tire iron on her head killed her. Mm -hmm. And then they moved, then when the uh, DCI relative came, um, they had to figure out what they were going to do with the RAV. And then the RAV was parked down in one spot. And somehow some paperwork and a phone fell out. And that was found much later by Pam of God. But no, nothing's ever said about that. Whose phone was that? And what, you know, the paperwork, whose paperwork was it? I have a video about that phone you can find in the Fall Play uh, YouTube channel. Oh, I'll have to check that out. <laughs> that's because so that's... It, who did it belong to? But anyway, that's the guy's theory is that and then and then the ball started rolling from there. And so she was buried over by Cuss and then the cops found her and burnt her body and uh, the, the oh, rest, he, as they say. Well, no, he thought that maybe they found her and gave her to the Hallbacks to have oh, a okay. proper burial. That's his theory is that that's what happened. She was never burned. She was turned over to her parents. The parents were contacted. And, you know, I think maybe that's what all what happened on the third with Colburn. I don't know. But then they thought, hey, now we can put two to two together. And then there's that theory that they got another car from Herman's from Cleveland Auto Salvage. Also. We're not going to get started on the second rap theory today because we only, we only have a limited amount of time, and that's going to right, take a lot of time. Right. <laughs> well, that was his theory. That that was his theory yeah. that you know they. Well, that's a neat theory, uh, you know, and and uh, it, it's really cool. Uh, you know, it it, uh, it it fits the it fits the facts. Um, it actually strangely lines up with uh, with Zellner's uh, video of where she was killed because that that would be about in the same spot on uh, on, on Cuss Road and explain some of the things we heard about in the calls the uh the rav that had the broken windshield and the broken out passenger window um yep. that that could be where that it came from and you know that rav is actually any real report on that rav is actually hard to find so that'd be something they'd want to bury wouldn't it yeah but the report about the car broken windshield you know who gave that report to the officers who who tell us robert fabian Oh, really? <laughs> and who's Robert Fabian, by the way? Earl Avery's brother-in-law. Hmm. They did a little rabbit hunting together, didn't they? Yeah, that thing. Well, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Fabian, Fabian gives me bad vibes. Well, and also that theory fits with people who believe that it was Carmen's bones or somebody else's bones who were used. Yeah. Yes. Just because, to, in, in, in order to in order to fake that, you need um, somebody's bones and their mother, right? And so, if there were Carmen Botwell's bones, you'd have to get the sample from Carmen Botwell and uh, hand it over to Helmet Head Colhane, uh, who would need to do the old switcheroo. And there you have it, right? A match, a mitochondrial DNA match between mother and daughter. Yeah, yeah. So, or it could be grandmother and daughter too. Could be grandmother probably. and daughter. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> And they um, have blood from Carmen too, because they did the autopsy, and so they'd have blood. Yep. And all. I mean, that could yep. be. That yep. could they'd be have the everything. Grab, and they could just say it was Teresa's. Because it checks DNA, all the boxes. The DNA isn't going to match either one. They both, you know, I mean, there's yeah. like one, one yeah, little. did the death certificate? Sorry. One little thing. Yep. You know. Uh, so, what know. do you think are the biggest detractors uh, to this theory? Um, that a, you mean, what would make it not be? No, what is it that you don't like about it? You, you know, there, is there things that make you go, well, you know, there's, you know, I, I, this, this one's hard to swallow. This doesn't quite fit the facts as I understand them. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm, I don't know. Um, okay. That's okay. You don't have to have one. I, I have one. Third, okay. Go ahead, baby. There, that he some... was part of law enforcement, this uh, person whose oh, yeah. theory it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he, he could be a, be a disinformation yeah. officer. Yep. Spreading disinformation. Ooh, local truther? Local truther? Yes. Yes. Because he is tied with the Manitowoc police. 
people are afraid of the police, I think, in the, in that area. They know there's a lot of corruption and they know what happens to people who open their mouths, right? I don't know. I don't know if local truther is still involved. He said he was there until Herman came in. Still, a cop, that. still a cop, whatever. Yeah. Well, and then it's been rumored that he married, after he divorced his, his wife, that he married a Manitowoc police officer. Manitowoc City police officer. And then it was said that the wife ended up marrying a guy that was a fire expert, like a fire inspector or something like that. The plot thickens. Interesting. <laughs> okay, well, we spent quite a bit of time on, on that on that theory. Why don't we move on? Uh, right. Mil Millbilly, why don't you tell us about uh, Bobby Dassey and Mike Osmond? Well, that was my initial thoughts when I first started diving into this case. Their inconsistencies and in what they say. The fact that Mike Osmondson states that the only time he was on that property is a day he couldn't have been. Because, for one, it's a crime scene. The whole place is on lockdown. And he also yeah. claims he was talking to Stephen Avery. Yeah, why don't we back up and tell, tell the viewers that story? So that story is that, that Bobby and Mike are skinning, skinning a deer, right? That's how that starts. Yes. Uh, Steve, yeah, and Stephen walks by and uh, allegedly says to Mike and Bobby, you want to help me hide a body, right? Yep. And, and, uh, and this comes up at trial, doesn't it? And by going over everybody's statements and everything that I've heard, that statement, I believe, happened on the 31st. On the 31st? Wow. Yes, because Stephen in his interview says that that he went over by them to see the deer that Bobby got, and he says this happens on the thirty first. We got Redont statement stating that he went to go see the deer that Bobby got. Says it's the thirty first. Wow, that's impressive. So, yeah, so uh, and, maybe, and, maybe I said it backwards. So, so it was Mike O who said to Stephen, "Do you need help hiding the body?" Something like that. Well, Kratz uses Bobby Dassey as overhearing the statement. I see, yeah. But there's a reason why they didn't want to bring Mike Osmondson into this situation completely, because he is hiding something. Every day they hang out, but the 31st. He claims to have been there only between the 31st and the 14th, he was only there one day, and that was on the tenth. Hmm. Where was Stephen Avery that day? In prison. He got arrested on the ninth. <laughs> well, that would have made it hard <laughs> for him to overlook Bobby and Mike skinning that deer, wouldn't it? And it, it, they even talked to Mike Osmond's mother, and she states that Bobby Dassey and him go hunting every day on their property. Brendan Dassey's first interview, he states that Bobby and Mike every day go goose hunting. They hang out every day, but that day. They go hunting every day, but that day. And that day that they go, Bobby claims he goes hunting on Scott's trailer, by his trailer in the land. Mm -hmm. Nothing makes sense. That's why I think Scott Tadich alibying Mike, or Bobby Dassey on the 47 was to eliminate Mike Osmondson from the picture. And uh, probably the uh, Beauty and Strang weren't smart enough to subpoena uh, Mike O because they didn't realize the, the import of, of that statement. This probably was even the first time that they, they caught drift of the hide the body statement. They thought it was just some offhand statement that they could easily dismiss, right? Not realizing that, uh, oh boy, that this really, <laughs> that, when did this really happen? There's really only a two day window that was viable for Stephen even been there uh, and for the news of Teresa to have been out, right? Mm hmm. And Stephen Avery could not have done this no matter what, because if you look at everybody's statements on things that happen on each day, he's the only one telling the truth. His story has stayed pretty consistent. It always is the same from day one. 
when you Evil. look at the calls, I and mean, he goes, he just goes over and over the same story on the calls. So, you know, he 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 hardly he hardly remembers anything new. Uh, the blood in the sink is the only thing that he thinks of. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, it's just it's it's amazing, uh, and he he's it's clear that he's dumbfounded uh, from the calls by what happened uh, to me anyway. Yes. So what else about Mike O uh, makes you think that uh, that he that he but that, that Bobby Mike O he goes? You pay any credence to this uh, Mike O with the tribal tattoo as a uh, you know possible serial killer slash stalker theory? It's just too too strange. All the stuff they find on Bobby Dash's computer. Yep. And now, they the spent fact, so much time together, right? At the time, yeah. so can can it be verified that Michael and Bobby were together, kind of you know, looking at this stuff together? And where's Bobby staying when the property seized and they're not allowed back on? He's at O's house. Yeah, and that's that's more than just a casual visit, too, right? Bob makes a statement that none of my kids want to come home, so yep. Bobby's taking up like an extended uh, residence there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, he spent a lot of time there. They were they were certainly partners in arms. You'd, you'd think you'd think minimally, uh, if Bobby did it, that um, Mike O would know about it. That'd be something that'd be hard to hide from your best friend. Uh, or you know, if they were doing that stuff together and kind of you know, uh, um, by that stuff I mean that you know that that sick porn um, that they were kind of you know alpha bonding, if you will, <laughs> to say ooh, ooh you know. And, getting themselves all revved up you know it's kind of it's kind of gross yes and uh, my initial theory has always been michael and bobby dashi if she was murdered yep but then yep. Uh, there's another theory that i've been kind of pondering on that it might have been ryan hilgis and kelly pitson kelly pitson because the cops from early as the 11th, they said that he had it accomplished. So they knew it. two people did this. And I've always thought it had to have been two people. Just the fact that the car, you're in a rural really area. Yeah. You, you, right. You're not just going to drive a car a long ways and have to walk. It, it, two people did this. So we're going to talk about Ryan in a bit. So um, if we could maybe talk about uh, you know, anything else on anything else on Bobby uh, that that bothers you. Uh, what about the what about the gun that uh, Scott Tadich tries to sell? Uh, is, is that uh, is uh, is that type of gun capable of shooting the cal uh, caliber or velocity of bullet that uh, people claim was necessary to make those indents on the skull fragments? No. It's even yeah, stated, it stated that <laughs> stated it was a high velocity round that went through right. that skull piece of skull fragment, not a twenty two. Okay. Even Kratz, he's even said that the, he commented on one of my videos. Ken Kratz. Yes, as Charles. You're, fam Dar you're a famous and influential uh, YouTuber. That people should be commenting on your videos. And. In one comment, he says that the bullet that killed Teresa was found in the garage. And then the next comment after that, he says, the bullet fragment found in the garage is not the one that went through her head. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe that one went through her heart, you know? So uh, I would expect that uh, Charles Darwin would know, being the master of evolution, as to what which actual bullet it was, and be able to tell just by looking which one it was, right? Yeah. <laughs> so a, a question came up yesterday in one of our uh, Discord chats. I, I I know I know that you're a hunter, and maybe maybe you can answer this question. Uh, if if Teresa were really shot uh, eleven times. Uh, and burned in Stephen's burn pit, and that did get hard enough to burn. Now, let's assume all that's true. Uh, we know that lead will melt uh, at the temperature that it takes to burn a body, but would, would, wouldn't you be left with some eventually some hardened slag uh, that should show up in that thorough sifting that Weigert and company did? Uh, so, is, yeah, do you have any knowledge of that? I mean, you, you must have uh, burned some dead animal carcasses in your day. What happens if there's any bullets embedded in the body? 
will, will you find slag or what will you find? Well, typically when I shoot my deer, it goes right through them. Oh, okay. Because you're shooting with the high velocity round, not a twenty two. Yeah. You're not you're not going to go deer hunting with a twenty two. Hmm. Okay. I mean, you could kill a deer with a twenty two, but you run a, run a risk of you shooting it and it running off, and you having to wait for it to die. Yeah. Um, but what do you think would happen to the bullet? So the question, the, you know, if, if Brendan's story were true and Teresa were really shot 11 times, right? And there, and uh, all of those bullets couldn't have went through her, right? No. Um, one of them must have stopped. Shouldn't we have found some hardened lead slag in the, uh, uh, in the fire pit? There should be something. Okay. So, but but there's nothing, so... <laughs> well, there's certainly not enough mass, right? Of, of all the bones that they discover everywhere, there's not enough to, to make uh, to make up a body, is there? No. So there's a, so so what what is it that what is it that turns you off about the is, is there is there anything that you think uh, is uh, you know exculpatory or you know what's the biggest weak point of the Bobby Mico theory? I haven't found one. <laughs> That's. That's pretty telling, all because everything kind of fits the facts really well, doesn't it? Yes, and it's to, to me if there's if there's one, it's you know that same thing that was brought up at the beginning. Um, you know, if, if this if this were a um, if this were say a uh, an impulsive sex act uh, or you know you know murderous uh, inspired kind of crime that's not uh, you know uh, intellectually planned, let's say. Um, you know, just the timing of it is just so unbelievably convenient for the state of uh, Wisconsin. Would, would you say that? Do you, you think that this was a set, uh, uh, sort of a crime of passion, if you will? Or do you think that he was part of a larger setup? I think Manitowoc got lucky. Yeah, that's, that's quite very possible. They they certainly uh, hit the lottery. But, and, uh, but. I, I was listening to more dispatch again, and it it, it dawned on me when Weger calls Manitowoc Sheriff's Department, he doesn't ask. First, he asks, "Are there any detectives working?" She says, "No." He says, "Okay, who is your shift commander?" Oh, not can I talk to your shift commander? Who is the shift commander? She says, Sergeant Colborn. He says, okay, can you patch me through to him? So you can't see him doing the happy dance in the background, right? He probably kind of did the little cha-cha because he and was so went, happy it was Colborn. And <laughs> the fact that we have no timestamps on none of the dispatch for Manitowoc is very sketchy. Yeah. But... Using the Calumet dispatch and the Manitowoc dispatch, I've been able to pinpoint when things have transpired. Colborn calls Link prior to 5 p.m. That's a fact. On, the, on November 3rd, that, you're talking about. On November 3rd, because at 5.07, we have Link calling Calumet looking for Wiegert. Okay. Why does Wiegert lie? on a search warrant and say that when Teresa Hallbox reported missing, it happens at 5 p.m. It happened at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, didn't it? 2.37. 2.30, 2.30. And just out of curiosity, I, I know we're not going to go down this road, but what, what color did Wiegert say that uh, that um, Karen Hallbox said the car was again on that report? Uh, uh, which one? On the report? Dark blue? On report. Oh, on, the, on, the, on the search warrant affidavit, he writes, she reported it at 5 o'clock, and it was dark blue. Yeah. I wonder why he said that. <laughs> okay. Um, I had another question for you, but I, but I, but I lost it. Um, so uh, that, that's a lot of time. I, I, th I think uh, we, we can look forward to a video on your channel soon enough, right? That's going to align the, uh, the Calumet and Manitowoc calls, uh, yep. giving us some real insight as, as to when that's going to happen. Everybody should be a liker and a subscriber of uh, YouTube's videos. You actually get to inter interact with potentially with the sweaty prize himself. 
uh, commenting on uh, on those uh, on, on those videos. So that'd be great. He commented on one video eight times. Nice. Well, I mean, you're you're, you're a popular guy in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. How many how many total hours? Uh, how many total hours has your have your videos been watching? You have a lot of hours of watching on your on your. Channel. Uh, like sixty five thousand, something like that. Five thousand. That's pretty good. That, that's pretty good for this case. Well, thank you, thank you for that, um, Bill Billy. Uh, why don't we move on uh, at this point? Whose turn is Obi Wan? Thank you for joining us today. What? What? So, what is your favorite theory uh, about all this? Uh, I'd have to go with both Ryan and Scott. So it's a conspiracy. Uh, or, or are you saying uh, each of them individually, or they collaborated together? Some. I believe in a way they collaborated together, but I don't think that the act actually happened together. Okay, excellent. I, uh, and, and just we're, to, to clear something up, um, just in case people are confused, because we were talking about Scott Tadich a second ago uh, when we were talking with Millbilly. We are talking about Scott Bladorn, uh, Teresa's roommate. Yes, Scott Bladorn okay. and yeah. Ryan. Ryan Hilligus. Okay, thank you. So, so take, take it from there. So how, how, how do you think this all uh, played out? Uh, I think it first started off with uh, Scott and uh, Teresa getting into an argument. I believe that he had mentioned something to Teresa about uh, his intimate relationship with her and possibly of another named Bradley Jack. And I believe that after Ryan had found out about this, I think that he had confronted Teresa and one thing led to another and he took it overboard. Out of and, who, and who is he in that case? Race. Is he Ryan or is he Scott? That's, that's Ryan. Ryan. So, so just, I mean, this, there's, there's, there's evidence of what you, uh, you know, of, of what you are talking about, um, uh, because uh, you know, Teresa did write an email to one of her friends uh, that was um, taken off of her computer by Veely, uh, that the same forensic analysis of the famous Veely CD with Bobby, uh, with uh, Brendan's uh, computer, Bobby's computer. Mm -hmm. uh, and that email said that, oh, you know, I did have this uh, intimate relationship with my roommate, Scott. Uh, and I really think it was kind of a mistake and he's really kind of disgusting me lately. And uh, you, you can, you can see, and this, this was you know, in, in, in some recent time, he hadn't been living there all that long. Uh, right. And uh, very shortly after she's, um, you know, she's intimate with, uh, with Bradley check as she's moving on. So you can see how Scott Bladorn, like you said, might've been sort of, you know, perturbed about this. He was hoping it would go further. He was happy with that relationship. Um, maybe he told his best bud, Ryan Hilgis about it. Right. And Ryan sent Ryan off the deep end or something. So that, that's kind of how that theory goes. Right. Nice. nice. Uh, so, uh, go ahead. Both Ryan and Scott, uh, they, I believe that they had the most reason to murder or kill Teresa than anyone, as far as motive is concerned. Uh, they both had an intimate relationship with her. They both hid it from law enforcement and they weren't being honest about it. Um, the jury as well, they knew very little uh, about the extent of Ryan's relationship. Uh, they were absolutely clueless as to Scott's and Teresa's relationship. Uh, according to Bradley Check, uh, he claimed that Teresa confided in him and that she was truthful about her sexual relationship with Scott Blodorn. Uh, yep. yep. So what I don't understand is, is why Scott would choose to withhold this information from law enforcement, let alone uh, the jury. Uh, I kind of feel it's kind of deceptive in a way. It's certain, uh, well, it's as we both know, uh, you know, 99 times out of 100, when some type of incident happens, uh, they go looking at the, the people who knew her best uh, and most intimately and 90, uh, or any any crime victim. And 99 times out of 100, it's the husband or the or the wife or the boyfriend, uh, someone who is who is intimate uh, because that's a crime of passion. And you're only passionate about the people, you know, very well. And according to uh, Brad, 
no, this is like speculation. Oh, not speculation, but hearsay. I know it's from a third party, but uh, Brad said that Teresa supposedly said that uh, she felt as though her sexual relationship with Scott was a mistake. So to me, it kind of feels like a rendezvous or like a one night stand type of thing. Mm -hmm. I don't really think of it as friends with benefits. I think what happened was, is they were drinking together. They were at a party and yeah, I mean, things happen, you know, at night, you're lonely in the house together. I mean, things can happen. Uh, and we, we we know we know um, that uh, Ryan Hillegas did stalk her to a party, you know, and then she yes. she was afraid of him. Um, what, what what do you what do you know about that, Ben? Well, oh, I had everything in a row, but oh, sorry, uh, no, go ahead. <laughs> I don't want to deviate. Yeah, let's not deviate. I, from the I can get I can get to that. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, well, with. With Scott, I feel I kind of feel like he wanted. I think he thought that that rendezvous that he had with Teresa, it. I think he kind of he he took a little a, a little bit too far, and I think that he really thought that it was going to go somewhere. Like I think that he was thinking, or he even wanted more from Teresa, and Teresa didn't want to take it to the next level, you know. Uh, I could see that her her maybe asking him to move out because she thought that it was a mistake. I uh, I could see that, that that might even anger, or maybe Scott even felt like he was even rejected in a way. That's that's motive right there, being oh, rejection. Yeah. Uh, maybe he even threatened to uh, tell Ryan about his relationship, or tell or tell Teresa. Or, uh, yeah, tell yeah. Uh, Ryan about Bradley Check or his own relationship with her. Uh, Scott kind of seems like he's a very passive person. Uh, I think he can easily be influenced or uh, threatened in a way. You know, I mean, I think if, if Ryan actually snapped out in front of uh, him uh, attacking Teresa, I think that he might feel compelled to side with him and want to help you know what i mean get rid mm -hmm. of the body or whatnot if if it did take it to that level obviously something happened so, so well, how do, how i have a little tidbit on uh ryan hillegas do you know what uh you know he he played bass he had a band yeah anybody know what the name of the band was no no oh, Con uh... Con conscious lies <laughs> 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 well, there's also a tidbit on Scott that we learned, um, and that's where they were going to get his fingerprints from. Oh, yeah. So uh, Scott uh, Blade Runner was applied to the and, FBI. And, and remember, Kratz now gave Ryan Hilgis a new alibi, claiming that he when this happened. He was in, uh, you cut out a little bit, but he, you said he was in Madison. And had a girlfriend. Yeah. And had a girlfriend, when in reality, the case was what? In court, he said he lived with his mom and was, didn't have a girlfriend. Yeah, so he was only a little wrong, right? So uh, does, that, does that remind you of anybody else? Anybody? Can anybody say Dennis Vogel? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who said Gregory Allen's parole officer said he was in another county when Penny Bernstein was raped? Well, well we, was, all, we all know where he was as Eddie Burst was raping, raping him. Wisconsin Department of Justice is just brought, being brought out on more corruption than here in more. Kenosha County. Michael Bell, I don't know if you guys have heard of him. He was fatally shot by a police officer right to the head. And wow. the cops lied in their deposition, stating that what happened it couldn't have happened. It was forensically proven that what they said happened couldn't have happened, and it's just been sweeped under the rug. Mobley, wow. is that the guy who was bent over the hood of his car in his driveway? That's correct. Yeah. They had yeah. Four, three witnesses that were 10 feet away, though they chose to use the witness that was across the street in her house looking out a window. 
Is that it's, the one where they said that he was reaching for his gun and it got it actually got snagged from the mirror? Yeah, yeah. his his gun yeah. got snagged on the mirror of his car, and the cop yelled out, "He's got my gun!" And the cop shot him point blank right in the head. Well, they were to they were to investigate that, but Schimmel stepped in the way of that investigation and actually told the father that he felt that nothing would come of it because the jury would end up siding with the pros. Well, you know what I mean? The state. The state. That's a good well, reason because I, because yeah. I think the jury might side with the state. So we're not going to move forward on any investigation or prosecution. Who, who thinks yes. that's a good reason to, to not do it? <laughs> no one on this call, I can guarantee you. Okay. Um, Excellent. So I'd like to, I'm getting sensitive to the time. I'd like to move on to Christy. I'll be quick. If you had gone first, I had something to say. Or if you had called on me first, I had something to say. But now I'm just calling you you first. I apologize. No, 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 no. No, you weren't (laughs) supposed to. I'm just saying if you had, I had something to say. But now I've decided the Easter Bunny did it. I'm done. I give up. (laughs) I'm throwing my hands (laughs) up. I don't know what to think. The Easter Bunny did it. The Easter Bunny and Ed Edwards. That's who did it. That's my theory. I have nothing to support it. I have nothing. Um, Wouldn't so, it be the headless pumpkin? It was something like that. Maybe the Easter Bunny came out of retirement. I don't know. <laughs> A lot of people seem to come out of retirement here, too. So maybe the Easter Bunny came out of hibernation. and came, I don't know. This It just gets crazier and crazier with everybody's theory that you listen to. I learned a few things today that I didn't know or at least had forgotten. It just, the deeper you get, the harder it gets. Um, I don't know who my favorite theory is. I really, I just don't know anymore. So I'm going with the Easter Bunny. So, all right. So, so let's, let's, let's jump on that theme. We do have a little bit of time left uh, before we t- talk about uh, the last uh, p- possible suspect uh, that I wanted to get to today. How about we do a quick lightning round? Of what's, what's your favorite um, you know, realistic, but crazy, but, but, but maybe, but maybe a little bit crazy theory, um, you know, a little bit saner than the Easter bunny, a little bit saner than she slipped on the ice and fell into a 55 gallon drum and drown and Ken Kratt sweat, sweat, something like you know, something a little bit saner. I'll go first. If anybody wants to join in the lightning round, uh, 30 seconds, uh, old man zipper shot her in the head because he was shit faced when, when she showed up. Anybody else want to toss in a, a, a theory? Edward, Edward, Edward Edwards. Dogs. She's alive. She's still alive. She got uh, oh, a zipper's dogs attacked her and killed her. That's a good one. Is that what you said, baby? Yeah, better to the dogs. Oh, better to the dogs. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anybody else? Uh, I, I like that. I like. I, I meant to mention the Edward 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 one. Edward Edwards one before. Anybody else got a, a quick a quick and dirty one? No one mentioned I would, I'm, I'm gonna say she made it home and and uh, Ryan was there. She made it home and snubbed her and that's my theory. I I think Ryan is the guilty person. Okay, jo- uh, uh, Zoe Josh Redon. Yeah, no one mentioned him. No one mentioned him. Uh, he, He's and, a good and, one. Uh, he was actually. Uh, Zellner's, uh, in Zellner's original motion for post-conviction relief, Redant was subject A or person of interest A, the very, the very first one uh, that, that she was going to uh, accuse until she sort of, um, you know, m- at least tacitly uh, gave him a pass in MAM too. And he's a good one. Um, well, you know, Josh had a brother, too. Named well, um, and Josh was Jason. Run through the police barricade. Jason, Jason Ronda. R- he's, he's, he's a good I, one. I have something to support the Redot being possible suspect. The fact that the dogs hit on the berm and the fence line between Stephen Avery's and Cuss Road. Guess who mm-hmm. was just cutting down all the brush in that area? Uh, yeah. For Stephen to burn it later, Josh Redot. Well, yeah. and Millbilly, didn't the dogs hit on... Um, um, his back stoop or something. The red trailer oh, at Redont. The dogs yes. were crazy, yeah, yeah. crazy. Yep. And they were told to. I went over this in one of my videos. They tell Loof, he goes. They bear, they tape off Cuss Road, and he tries to go past the barrier tape, and they send them back. 
they bring yep, them back. A, they, they bring them back a couple of hours later, and it's even stated in the reports that the dog indicated that something is not right. Yep. And then on the seventh, they wouldn't let the dogs back on over there at Cuss Road on the seventh. Right. I'm talking about the same, that's the same day I'm talking about. They wouldn't let Loof over there. Right. Yep. Right. And then they sent Loof back, and then they let Loof come back there after 1 p.m. Oh, maybe that was the restaging that they did on Cuss Road, because they went back <laughs> on the 8th, too. <laughs> what, you notice on the front of those, it they're supposed to be on Jambo Creek? I don't know Jambo the Creek area road? where the road is. On, on, the, on the front of the dog reports, there's two of them, yeah. from two officers, one of them being Bushman. The other one beside out. One in red ink, one in black ink. They both say Jambo Creek on the top, but on the back, why are they saying restage Cuss Road? Exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just like Manitowoc, <laughs> Man Manitowoc Sheriff's Department report, don't mention anything about Cuss Road. They don't mention White no. Cedar. Um, yeah, there, isn't in, well, there isn't any information on what happened that day, and there were a lot of people. A lot. To Welcome to Theory Thursday, everybody. Well, yeah. so, so the, audio, the, the audio from that day is very telling. Yes, it oh, yeah. is. I listened to it. My jaw we dropped. Can, we can find that on your channel, though, Billy. Uh, so maybe we can leave a link to that. In the, yeah. In the and I, everybody, I, you don't, you, if you're interested in this case, you have to listen to that audio. And I have, yes, you have to. I have it's two videos for that, or actually three for that day. One is the one I just posted the other day, which is 46 minutes of audio. Previously, it was only like 14. And was that information for you? Is that how you got it? Uh, I got this from AC Rookie. Awesome. And then you're slowly piecing it together where it belongs, right? That's how it got longer? No. Oh. It's just that whoever, whoever uploaded it to the clip site edited, edited what it. they edited what they uploaded. Yeah. Oh. You don't, you don't, they edit out, they edit out phone numbers. Oh, yeah, yeah. And some names. Why? What was Colburn's question. badge what, number? What's the, the only, four, 432. Okay. The only thing I could think of is certain sites make you redact stuff. Like when they post stuff on Reddit, they have to redact certain names. I don't know if Clips is that way or not. Okay, well, we're going to we're, we're gonna get back on topic okay. <laughs> <laughs> because we're yet we're very we're we're running, we're running a little bit over. But the last the last suspect again the 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 the, the, the mo today has been, uh, you know, uh, who who's who's your favorite suspect? What what draws you uh, to that suspect? And what is, are the biggest negatives to that suspect? So the well, last the last name I'd like to consider today is Stephen Avery. Um. Why, why is it that guilters are so uh, excited about about Steve? And I'd say there's probably two things. One, one is the one is the evidence, uh, and uh, we can go over the sketchiness of the evidence and uh, you know and uh, you know and, 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 and another uh, thing. Uh, but the second thing, the second thing is probably almost the same, in the same way um, that uh, uh, we said we talked at the beginning. It's sort of the the co the coincidence nature of it. Uh, is a girl. He's the last one to see her. I mean, come on, it had to be him, right? Um, allegedly, but allegedly, but but what are the what are the major things uh, in everyone's mind? And this will be our sort of our uh, you know our closing roundtable. Uh, what what are the things in in your minds, the people on this call, that are the main detractors? What is it that what is it that happened that 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 you found that one piece of evidence that you say that there's there's no way this could have been. It? And it could be the compadrance of them all. Um, but if there's one thing that put you over the top, what was it? Want to go first, Mill Billy? Listening to Stephen's phone calls from jail. He's just completely blindsided about the, finding the, um, the, his blood in the rat. He just, he just can't believe it, right? Right when they tell him that, when he was in his interview on the 9th, they tell him that. Definitely for me, he he, uh, he taught, in those phone calls. That's a great example because he's always talking about the the keys they found in his house. Right? It doesn't say the key, 
the guy, the, he says, oh, the keys, they found her keys in my house. He doesn't really know <laughs> what they found in his own, in his own house. He keeps on saying the keys. Mm-hmm. And Dolores actually points it out to him that they only found one key, not keys, one key. <laughs> Who carries around one key? Yeah, I'm, she even I'm goes supposedly... so far as to say that uh, even their grandmother uh, carried keys. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, BB? What's your favorite? What's your favorite um, thing? What What is it that, that, in your mind, convinced you that Stephen was not guilty? I felt that right away from episode one of Ma'am, um, just because I could clearly see from it that they're doing it to him again. Yeah. It's too convenient, right? They too convenient. They set him up for the Penny Bernstein thing, no doubt. Even with how many witnesses that he wouldn't have had time, a receipt and everything else with Penny Bernstein, and then they're doing it to him again. Doing it to him again. What about you, Christy? It's the totality of all of it, but really, yeah. like Nobilly said, yeah. it's the calls. It's hearing it. Calls. It's it that's not a guilty man in those phone calls. And I've listened to close to a hundred hours, if not more, somewhere around there, of him talking to people and he's bewildered. He's he is scratching his head trying to figure out who could have done this, why would they have done this? He's you can hear that. That's those are not the yes. cause of a guilty man, period. Oh, I definitely well, agree and he, with that. he even goes Good. against his lawyer. Um, yeah. and keeps calling newspapers because he wants to get oh. his side out. Desperate to tell a story. A- after listening to these calls with him, his defense team fucked him. They pressured him to put his lawsuit on hold. For what? So they yeah. could stop the depositions and stop the case. Then they get him to settle. I understand so because, at some point he could have called a mistrial and didn't do that because of his lawyer. lawyer. I like Mama Avery's theory. I like Mama Avery's theory of uh, Teresa was paid off to go away. Yeah. And she's still alive. And it's very, very telling to, to hear them coming up with the same theories that we all do. Well, they had They had support from others in that theory uh, from the Herald. Yeah. And, well, and there was like a dozen people that claim they have seen her elsewhere after the fact. Yeah. Uh, let's let's take a step back to Sammy's uh, for a second. Uh, uh, can you explain a little bit, Sammy, that 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 specific call that they're talking about was somebody's relative, right? Uh, who who worked at that uh, newspaper? Can you can you uh, yeah, tell us a little bit more? Yeah, Brian Brian's girlfriend's dad, I think. And yeah, Br- Brian Dassey, yeah. Yeah, I think that this man had a little bit to say, you know, to let them know, hey, I'm in your corner. I don't think he did this, and this is what our thoughts are. And I think at some point they kind of pulled out on him and didn't support him. But in the end, it was all the messages that she was getting word from there that, you know, they didn't believe that she was even dead. And Mama Avery said, I agree. Yep. So, Julie, you've been quiet for a long time, uh, and I know you've also been following the case for a long time. What was the first thing that you saw that said, oh, my God, I don't think he did this? Uh, I would say spending 18 years in prison as an innocent man, coming out, (laughs) having his lawyers convince him to sue the state and city for $36 million, be out for not even two years no complaints about him didn't do anything <clears throat> and bam the, the t- he the murders timing somebody that's the, the, the he murders somebody you know he's looking at 36 mil we know he's not going to get 36 mil but at least one or two million i mean he was looking at you know a, a good future with that Oh, yeah. And yeah. there are only two people left to do depositions, and they were kind of high up people. And I think they got nervous, and the money would not have come from 
from the insurance that the city or the county has because it was too much money and so it would have to be all suits you know the those involved those being deposed would have to come shell out of their own pockets and come up with this money and so it just got, doesn't make got... sense why why would a man serve 18 years as an innocent man come out and within two years he's murdering some lady that he was an acquaintance with he knew her he had no issues with her he liked her he you know and he had a girlfriend in jail that he was obviously very 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 much in love with right. you know Tell it just it just day. none of it like they say in the phone calls it don't make sense yeah. you know, just one, don't one, make any sense one improbable event is one thing but to have two of them happen at the same time that he would do this at the you know, at this time in his life and he would do this at the time when he was on the precipice of uh, 36 million uh, right or some at least some large payouts just unbelievable um obi-wan what is yes. your when you what what's when what what is your uh, your first um inkling you know what 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 did you see that said nope it's not him uh to me, I mean, there's a dozen of them I can name, but I mean, the biggest one is Andrew Colburn's call. <laughs> that would be the call. That the call third. right there tells <laughs> us everything we need to know. Yep. Yep. It, 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 it's kind of a long line. You want to? You want to get? You want to get another one? Tell us another one. We got a list of them. Uh, my next one would have to be Brendan Dassey's confession. The forced that, nature of it. That confession and what they did, and knowing the extent days earlier of what they did with him in Fox Hills, and not knowing what all took place up there, I just feel like, I mean, it's just easy to see that they manipulated and coerced this child. Absolutely. Um, so I, I guess mine, I get, I, I get to go last is, uh, you know, uh, a, a little bit, just a little bit on the evidence. You know, for, for me, if you if you can really get to the fact that they planted one thing, you can't trust anything. And the key is just so obviously planted. Uh, item FL is just so obviously planted. Like they come, they come up with that out of, out of nowhere. The RAV is so planted. The RAV, the RAV is obviously yeah. planted. Uh, the fact that the you know very conveniently, as we've said so many times in this uh, in this uh, podcast already, uh, they don't see the rav on they there's no the flyover only three minutes on the third right I, excuse me on the fourth, uh, and uh, you know no, none of where they have the rav yet on the on the uh, uh, fifth they 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 uh, catch the tarp rav about ten times right at different uh, different passes there. Uh, so if, if they plant one thing, they're capable of planting anything. If they plant one thing, they should just throw the whole thing out. It's just, it's just not possible. I agree. So uh, anyway, uh, does anybody have any closing comments? I just one. waiting on waiting on pins and needles for the COA to get a hold of Kaz. Oh, KZ. Boy, KZ, that'd be great. Uh, I'd love it if she got an evidentiary hearing. She's going to roast them alive, isn't she? Yeah, a new trial would be exoneration or a new trial would be the ultimate. That would be great. That would all be great. That's all we're, I think that's what we're hoping for in this channel. Uh, so, so with that, let's close it out. Uh, I think we're, we're really late on our hour podcast. I think we went about two hours. <laughs> I have one thing real quick. Oh, all good, the way baby. through this, all the way through this, I hear Saturday Night Live church lady saying, isn't that convenient? Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is great so anyway uh with that uh this has been a fall play production <laughs>